Let's talk about the difference between dopamine and serotonin and how that affects, you know, the the issues, the main issues you see in mental health, for example, social media. Right. So dopamine and serotonin are two neurotransmitters that get quite a lot of attention in mental health space. We have several neurotransmitters, but these two, because they have a big impact, big Im- impact on our mood and, as you said, mental health. So dopamine is this kind of um, mot- motivational neurotransmitter that increases our movement, our thrive, our wanting to do this. It kind of gets you into this, let's do this mode. But it's also linked to rewards. Mm. And your brain starts producing dopamine through learning process. So one of a very clear example is sugar. So we eat a piece of chocolate, our brain produces more dopamine, and we learn that that dopamine, which gave us now energy and motivation, came from the chocolate. So now we start to like create more chocolate, and if we eat chocolate very often, that increases our tendency and our wish to eat more chocolate. So there are certain things that increase dopamine very fast. Chocolate, coffee may do that. Um social media, shopping, Mm. anything that gives us fast pleasure. Why it's linked to motivation and work as well is that usually success at work gives us dopamine as well. Mm -hmm. So if we use too much of things that gives us fast dopamine, that's not getting us anywhere, like social media, whereas it might be entertaining and make us feel good, um, it does make our dopamine sort of spike a lot. and. When dopamine spikes, it comes down also, and it goes below the baseline levels before it comes back up, before it sort of restores. Yeah. It's kind of like with energy or something. If you go to the gym, you work out, you have a lot of energy, but then you kind of get into the, this fatigue and it, you need to restore it. And if you go to the gym all the time, all the time, all the time, you get into chronic fatigue mm. and over overtraining. Same with dopamine. If you just like increase dopamine, get these fast, fast dopamine spikes all the time, you kind of get fatigued. The brain gets fatigued. And then you are, you end up being in a dopamine deficiency, actually in a deficient state. And now you need to take a very long break to mm-hmm. restore back your dopamine. And you, you may feel depressed. You may feel like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to lay in bed and I don't want to socialize. I don't want to move. And that's usually a dopamine deficiency. Serotonin, whereas dopamine is this kind of energizing, motivating hormone, serotonin is more calming. It makes us feel content and happy, uh, but it's inhibitory more than excitatory. So it actually makes us feel calm. And these neurotransmitter, they usually work quite well together as well. So something that we go into the exercise that would increase both serotonin and dopamine. And the balance of this neurotransmitter is often cited when we talk about mental health. So a lack of either of these may cause some uh, mental health problems, like uh, lack of dopamine is often linked to depression, linked to feeling low energy, low motivation. Yeah, as I mm-hmm. described, it's kind of like the state where you're just in a bed and you don't want to do anything. Whereas lack of serotonin is more like you're irritable and you're anxious and you're like startling and you're, it's actually because serotonin is also linked to social co-affiliation and social cooperation. If you have lack of serotonin, you might feel that people just annoy you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're not that you don't feel it connected whereas yeah high dopamine or like healthy levels of dopamine feel like you have the motivation you have enthusiasm you have a drive to do things that you want to do and enough serotonin feels like you're calm content happy you have good sleep um, your digestion is flowing well serotonin actually has a lot of um, effects on our body to our heartbeat, to our breathing, to our gut motility, uh, to our body temperature, and things like that. So 
even with your example with the dopamine deficiency, like if you're doing, for example, if you're constantly on social media, you're getting that dopamine, those dopamine hits of like, oh, exciting thing, exciting thing. And you end up in a deficiency. It seems like most people's lifestyle will lead them to a deficiency because there's so much distraction. There's so many things that where we can get too much dopamine, I guess. So yeah, how do you how do you see that? And what can we do to stay balanced? Right, that's an excellent question because there are pretty much two types of way to get dopamine. One is the maladaptive one where you just get those hits and end up into a deficiency. And the other one is to get this steady increase in dopamine. And usually that requires doing something effortful first. So exercise increases dopamine, but that's not a bad way to get dopamine because you actually need to do something effortful first. Usually something that's hard at first and gives the pleasure after, then that gives this kind of more sustainable Mm. and healthy level of dopamine. So exercise, that's why people use cold showers. For example, in the morning, if they want the morning dopamine rather than social media. So social media would give you that like a snap of dopamine that will dip soon. But cold showers is actually very unpleasurable. Uh, yeah, very uncomfortable. You go into the cold shower, you feel like this is horrible. I want to get out. But then the dopamine that comes after, it feels very good after, like super refreshing. And then you just feel mental clarity. And it's shown that the dopamine is increasing at least up to two hours Mm. after you take a cold shower. So something that, yeah, takes a little bit of effort. That's usually a good way to get dopamine. Another good way to balance the dopamine is to do calm pleasures. So... Walking the nature increases dopamine, but it doesn't increase as much as something like show, shopping or, you know, social media. I mean, we all probably want to use social media and shop and thing. Don't do that at all. But if you find yourself in a state where you're chronically doing that, and if you are not doing that, you feel less meaning and less purpose and less motivation, then your dopamine might be dependent on that method. And you want to contemplate on, maybe I should, instead of going into the social media right now, maybe I should do a 10 minutes of yoga and get my dopamine from that exercise, from that movement. Maybe I should go out to have a 15 minute walk into nature and get my dopamine from that. It doesn't feel as fast. It's a bit more effortful, but it's so much healthier. And I can guarantee that that's going to make you feel so much better for the long run. Yeah, that's a really good way to kind of dis, kind of uh I guess identify what would be healthy and what's not healthy is like unhealthy hits of dopamine are easy, low effort and it's it's kind of it's not helping you, right? But like you want to do things that take more effort, things that are a little bit harder but still give you like a sense of satisfaction after doing it. Right, exactly. And just being mindful about um you know, why you don't want to stop scrolling social media, for example. And that is because it causes a little dip in dopamine when you put it away. And that feels, for most of us, that feels a little bit painful. Yeah. Or at least sad, like, ah, the fun is over. Yeah. Learn to anticipate that. You're like, okay, I'm going to feel this. It's okay. It'll pass in like one minute. And after that, I'm going to be happy again. I just need to put this phone away right now. And already that mindfulness on that action makes it so much easier to let go of that habit. What about serotonin? How do we stay balanced? What are the healthy things to do? Right. So I mentioned sunlight. So sunlight, I think sunlight is such an underappreciated, you know, natural tool for so many things. It has such good effects. It improves serotonin, vitamin D, everything. One thing we also need to do is eat carbs for serotonin Mm. because carbs actually help. So that's interesting. Serotonin is made from tryptophan that comes from food that are usually found in things like oatmeal or banana or turkey or milk. And when you eat that, you have a lot of proteins, amino acids in your body 
But when you get carbs, you get rays of insulin that actually helps to shuffle other amino acids to muscles and your serotonin gets easier or tryptophan gets easier access to the brain where it's made into serotonin. So eating things that I mentioned, oatmeal, banana, protein, make sure to get your protein, um, doing exercise, getting the sunlight and sleeping well. Those would be very good ways to balance the serotonin. Also social connection. It's also such an important mental health tool, like just cultivating loving, good uh, connections with the people that you love, like taking the time each day to maybe connect with a friend or call your mom or, you know, I don't know, hug your dog. Yeah. I noticed you have the yeah, I know dog he, there. He, he does give me a lot of serotonin <laughs> each day. Yes. Yeah, Aww. exactly. So just connections and mm-hmm. having these kind of, you know, interesting, inspiring discussions. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, this is giving me so much serotonin right now. Uh, Making sure to get these micro moments of social connection each day. Unfortunately, social media does, doesn't do that. So the studies show that social media is not as effective way to get the feeling of connection as real connections. 